Hey guys, before we start the video, I just wanted to let you know that during the middle of the video, I did forget something. I forgot to add something in the video. So at the end of the video, you'll hear me, you, you will hear me do my you know general outro, but make sure you stay to the end of it because there's a portion that I forgot to talk about and I added it in at the very end. So just a note to you guys, but hopefully you enjoy the video. And hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and now I'm today on a brand new video for tutorials with GS. Now today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to create a chorus effect on your vocals to make your voice or to make a part of your vocals sound like it's part of a chorus. Now, in, in a lot of music that we hear today, there's always this part of the song that makes it seem like there are three copies of the person singing. And this is mostly always the chorus. When you hear you know, Rihanna sing on a track, you, sometimes you always hear her voice like three times in a chorus, or any other artist even at that. So, um, before I start this tutorial, let me just warn you real quick. I tried to pick a song that I can sing somewhat decently, so for all of you Imagine Dragon fans, please don't hate on me. Because <laughs> I, 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 need, I, need I needed a chorus part of a song, well... I needed a song that has the effect in it and that I could sing decently. I didn't want to like do a rap because you can't really demonstrate it. So just be aware, I'm not the best singer, but it's just for tutorial purposes. So anyway, um, I'm going to be showing you how to create this chorus effect. And this is actually um, a person in another video that I created asked me this, how to do it. So just a quick note to all of you, if you, if you ever have any questions, I'll definitely respond to them or I'll make a video for you if it's a broad enough topic. So anyway, if we go ahead and listen to the first uh, bass recording here, you're gonna, let's go take a listen to it. Let me see my uh, volume's loud enough. Hopefully it is. 50 should be fine. I wanna hide the truth, I wanna shout to you But with the beast inside, does know where we can hide No matter what we breed, we still are made of greed This is my kingdom come, this is my kingdom come Alright, so that's basically one part of the song And if you were to place this specific track over the instrumental it would sound really bland. It would literally sound like you've just recorded yourself over the track, which is basically what you've done. So, um, there is a way to make your voice sound better. Mic quality has a lot to do with it. If you don't have a very good mic, um, you may not sound that well. But if you want to learn how to make your voice sound better, I have another video, which should be a link on the on. There should be an annotation right now. There's also going to be a link in the description on how to make your voice sound better and how to enhance your voice. However, if you're going to be using those effects in that other video, you want to do this part first. So if you've watched my other video on how to enhance your voice, don't do those effects yet. You want to do the chorus effect here first. Because if you put any other effects, like any other drastic effects on your voice, then this is really going to mess it up. You're going to get really, you're going to get loud, loud echoes, you're going to have delays, and all that stuff is going to sound really bad. So don't put any effects on your voice until you have this chorus effect. I mean, you can still, you know, do little minor changes, but don't do drastic effects that can really change your track. So, well, f the first thing we're going to do is, and um, what I highly recommend you do, is the first step is to re-record that same part of the song and just re-record it. I have a second track here that I've re-recorded. Now, the purpose of doing this is to already add sort of a back vocal to it. This is basically what we're adding. We're adding back vocals to it. And that's how choruses are made when, 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 ba when um, backup vocals are added to the main track. So what I have here is a second a version of me singing the same song. And you're going to see you can notice a pretty big difference already. It's not a huge difference, but, it's, but you can tell. We're going to listen to it right now. I want to hide the truth, I want to shout to you, but with the beast inside, there's nowhere we can hide. No matter what we breed, we still are made of greed. This is my kingdom come, this is my kingdom come. So once you have that second variation on top, then it's starting to sound a little more like a chorus. Now, there's uh, some other things that you can do, which we're going to do now. But if you want to keep it like this, that's fine. Um, you don't want to duplicate this track. A lot of people would just say, well, I'm just going to duplicate this track, highlight this, go to edit, 
and duplicate. If you do this, it's there's not going to be a difference. It's going to sound the exact same as this, which is why it's so crucial to make a second recording of it because no single recording is going to be 100% exactly the same, which is what we want. We want this to sound a little different so it sounds like we have a secondary voice behind it. Now, if you want to go the extra mile, you can do something else to make it sound really good. Now, for a for a tutorial, we're going to be calling this our bass track, and we'll be calling this our second variation. So what we want to do is leave your bass track alone, which is the first recording you did. We're only going to work with the second variation, which is the second recording you've done. What you want to do is highlight this entire track here, and this one you can duplicate. So go to Edit and click Duplicate. And this will basically create a second copy of this track. Now, don't bother worrying about the bass track. Leave that alone. Now with these two tracks that we have, if we play this, a portion of it... I wanna hide the truth, I wanna shout to you, but with the beast inside... Not much of a difference, just a little louder. But here's, here's the trick to it. What you wanna do is zoom in with your zoom tool, really zoom in pretty close. And um, make sure that you have both of your tracks if you have a small screen, then you want to make sure both of your tracks are like fit in this little gray box here. So what you can do is just grab the end of it and squeeze it down a little bit. Scale it down, the same one with this. Scale it down a little bit. So you have uh, both tracks in the window here. And then what you're going to do is go to a portion that's easy to notice a difference, or easy to recognize. Um, here, this looks pretty. This looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna grab your uh, time shift tool, which is this tool right here. And what you want to do is just slightly move the top track a little bit to the right, and move the bottom track a little bit to the left. Now it can vary in how how far you want to move it. The further you move it, uh, I don't know really how to explain it, but it's it's gonna have a greater effect. You don't want to have such a huge effect that it's noticeable that, you know, you've moved it all the way to the right and all the way to the left. But um, just move it. Just move it like this. Move it to the right a little bit. Move it to the left a little bit. And then what you want to do is on the left and right channel here, you want to move this one all the way to the right, and you want to move this one all the way to the left. So make sure the uh, the first one right here is to the right, and the second one here is to the left. Now, if we go ahead and zoom out here, if we go ahead and listen to this now, I wanna hide the truth, I wanna shout to you, but with the beast inside, there's nowhere we can hide. It sounds a lot thicker, it sounds a lot more like more powerful over the instrument. So it, it, if we compare this, if we mute these two tracks right now, this is our bass recording. This is what a lot of people just put on their the recording track, and for some of them it sounds really good, but if we listen to this, Beast inside does know where we can hide. It sounds just bland. It, there, there's, no, there's no thickness to it. There's no chorus aspects to it. So after we add these two right here, we get this nice sounding chorus-like effect. Where we can hide No matter what we breed We still are made of greed And that's how you create the chorus effect You don't need to use any of these effects up here Because none of the effects up here can actually accomplish this So it, it's more You have a lot of control of this You can play around with this a lot You can uh, move this one to the other side maybe And move this one to the right side You can, you can uh, um, use your time shift tool and move it a little more to the right, a little more to the left. You can play around with this a lot. You can make it sound like the way you want to make it sound like. And this is the cool thing about this effect is that you can personalize it very much so to your liking. And then after you've done this, if you want to add, you know, a voice enhancement, or if you want to add an echo sort of, you know, then you can go and add those echoes in afterwards. Um, or what you want to do is only add the echo to the bass track. Uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to play around and see what sounds better. If you want to add an echo to like your entire set here, or if you want to add an echo only to the bass track here, you know, um, 
for different songs it sounds better different ways but in my experiences I've always known to never put a, um, a drastic effect on the track unless um, you have your chorus bits done in certain in certain scenarios though uh, you can put drastic effects on and then this wouldn't really change but you know try it out this is basically the chorus effect not very hard to do very simple hope you enjoyed the tutorial and as always if you have any questions in the comments definitely leave them I'll read all the I read all the comments and I do tend to respond to any comments that you know look like they need some help um, and uh, yeah that's basically it thank you for watching and uh, I'm gonna see if we can make some more audacity tutorials I know that I already have a, a ton of uh, audacity tutorials you can see on my channel but if you have any other questions, I'll definitely try to do a video for you if it's a broad enough topic. Hey guys, just a quick uh, note. This is the end of the video already. I've just, right now I'm editing the, um, I'm, I'm about to edit the video. But uh, just a quick note, because I, I forgot to mention this. Um, so you know how we had our bass track right here? And then we had our uh, a second variation, then we had a duplicate of this. Uh, one thing that I do suggest you try to do is um, lower the volume of both of these tracks. And you can do that by this little... Um, this little head right here you can just drop it down to like maybe drop it down to 10 or maybe even a 6 or just try dropping it down a little bit and see how it sounds because remember um, we're trying to make we're trying to make this sound like a background vocal we don't want to have it as loud as the bass track our bass track should be the loudest portion and we want to have the um, the the backup vocals here, we want to have them a little lower volume. However, that's a personal preference. If you want to keep them the same volume, then you can do that. But also try it with um, lowering the volume here. Make sure both of these are the same lower. If you're looking to lower this one 10, lower this one 10 also. So just try that out and maybe it'll sound a little better so you don't have them, all three of them are so loud. But let me know which one you like more as well. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out and if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too, really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.